Hi friends, my name is Dr. Munir Jan. I am anesthesiologist and intensivist. Today in this slide video presentation, I will be discussing what is volutrauma, what is barotrauma and what is atelect trauma. And I will be discussing what is PEEP and its role in preventing the atelect trauma. So let's begin. <music> So volume trauma, what is volume trauma? It is volume related injury to the lung. If you give higher tidal volumes to the lung, it leads to the over distension. And with this over distension, there is lung injury in a patient receiving mechanical ventilation. Now, higher tidal volumes, as I said, result in increase in the stretch of the lung parenchyma. This increased stretch in the setting of already damaged lung parenchyma results in further inflammation and lung injury. So there is, if you give tidal volumes in a diseased lung, ARDS patient, there is already an infl there is already a disease process going on. This higher tidal volume lead to increased stretch of this lung and it leads to the inflammation and further lung injury. Now it has been seen in a multicentric randomized controlled trial that if you give tidal volume 6 ml per kg body weight and that body weight has to be ideal body weight. Why ideal body weight? Because this ideal body weight is dependent on the height of the patient and what we have seen that the lung size depends upon the you know height of the person so it has to be per kg body like 6 ml if you give 6 ml per kg body weight that to the ideal body weight it has been seen in the studies that their mortality is less than the patient who are receiving more tidal volume like, like more than 6 ml per kg that is the per idle body weight now in both pressure volume and uh, pressure modes of ventilation can be used to give this low tidal volume you know strategy low tidal volume strategy now in case of patient having this uh, volume control ventilation now how you can give the tidal uh, you know low tidal volume because in volume control ventilation we set the tidal volume isn't it we set the tidal volume we set the flow so we can simply set the lower tidal volumes and that too depending upon the ideal body weight of the patient so by this we can decrease the volume trauma that can happen in a patient on mechanical ventilation now in patients have you know where we are giving pressure control ventilation how we can you know prevent this volume trauma it is by setting the lower proximal airway pressure if you set the pressure on the lower side then you have to keep an eye on the how much tidal volume the patient is generating patient is taking depending upon that pressure there will be change in the tidal volume as well as the Flow. So you have to keep in the pressure control ventilation, you have to keep an eye on the tidal volume so that it should be near or about 6 ml per kg body weight. Now the key concept tidal volume should be less than or equal to 6 ml per kg of ideal body weight to prevent volume trauma in ARDS patient. Now how we calculate the ideal body weight in case of males ideal body weight is 50 kg plus 2.3 kg for each inch of inch over 5 feet and in case of females it is 45.5 kg plus 2.3 kg for each inch over 5 feet now the second concept is barotrauma barotrauma means pressure related injury that can happen in the lung in a patient on mechanical ventilation Endotracheal tubes and muscular cartilaginous airway can withstand high pressures, high airway pressures. However, excess airway pressure in the alveoli can lead to complications such as pneumothorax, pneumobidiastinum, and subcutaneous emphysema. So if you give high pressures in an already diseased lung, in an already problematic lung, or in a healthy lung where you give high pressures, positive airway pressures, 
with high pressures there is high tendency that there will be complications related to this high pressure now what are these complications that can happen it can lead to pneumothorax it can lead to pneumomediastinum and it can lead to the empi subcutaneous emphysema now how to prevent the barotrauma in a patient on pressure control ventilation so simply when a patient is on uh, you know pressure control ventilation or volume control ventilation now we should know at least what are the strategies that we can apply to decrease this pressure related injury that can happen to the patient now first in case of patient on volume control ventilation now if we have to prevent this barotrauma what we will do we will decrease the tidal volume up to 6 ml per kg body weight and that too ideal body weight okay now at the same time we will keep an eye on the plateau pressure what is the plateau pressure that is the maximum alveolar pressure we have to make sure that alveolar pressure has to be less than 30 centimeters of water now if you keep this less than 30 centimeter of water there is high possibility that there won't be any barotrauma pressure related injury that can happen to the lung now if a patient is on pressure control ventilation we can change the proximal airway pressure we can set the lower proximal airway pressures hence we can make sure that the injury related to the pressure that is the barotrauma will be minimized so in volume control ventilation you set the lower tidal volumes you keep an eye on plateau pressure and in pressure control ventilation you set the lower proximal airway pressures in order to prevent this barrel trauma now atelect trauma now what is atelect trauma the lung injury that is as a result of repetitive opening and closing of alveoli that is what is known as atelect trauma as a result of repeated opening and closing of alveoli the injury that can happen in the lung that is what is known as atelect trauma now as you know alveolar collapse is the hallmark of ARDS the repetitive opening and closing of collapsed alveoli with mechanical ventilation is detrimental as high shear stresses are generated at the interference or the interface of collapsed and aerated tissue when a collapsed alveoli is reopened so by this i mean in ARDS patient, what is the hallmark? There's a collapsed alveoli. Now, when we put the patient on mechanical ventilation, there is repetitive, there is tendency of that, this repetitive opening and closing of alveoli will happen. Now, when this there is repetitive opening and closing of alveoli, at the interference of this aerated and non-aerated, that is the collapsed uh, alveoli, there can happen the injury and that injury is what is known as the atelect trauma all know about the surfactant now what is surfactant it is the sub substance that reduces the alveolar wall surface tension so it is produced by the tied to alveolar cells and what is the role of its you know what what does it uh, what what is the role of this surfactant it reduces the surface wall tension now in a disease in an ARDS patient what happens there is a reduction in the surfactant production as well as the functioning of the surfactant is you know compromise there is loss of functioning of this surfactant with this loss of function and decrease in the production what will happen there is increase in the surface tension alveolar surface tension is at its high peak now what will happen with this surface tension the alveoli tends to collapse or there is a collapse of alveolus now there is two things to understand one is the opening pressure and other is the closing pressure now opening pressure is it is the minimum pressure that is required to you know make this sure that you open the alveoli so minimum pressure required to open the collapse air alveoli now one more concept is of this uh, what is known as the closing 
pressure now closing pressure it is the minimum pressure that is required to keep this alveolus open opening pressure is always on the higher side than the closing pressure now there is one more concept just uh, uh, that is uh, important to understand just uh, hold on a little bit I, I i just want to show you one picture uh, there's very important concept you just have to understand this uh, so what we have this is the figure that is showing us the alveolar pressure okay so there is opening pressure you can see opening pressure and the closing pressure opening pressure is on the higher side and the closing pressure is on the lower side now when the alveoli has the opening pressure lower side i mean uh, this uh, alveolar pressure is less than the closing pressure the alveolus is closed it is collapsed now when it keeps on increasing increasing and it reaches above the closing pressure but still it is close because to open this alveoli we have to make sure we increase this alveolar we increase this alveolar pressure above the opening pressure now you can see this c here the alveolar pressure is more than the opening pressure so hence the there is close there is opening of the alveolus now once the pressure in this alveolus falls down the uh, this opening pressure okay now it is above the closing pressure but still below the opening pressure at this point also the alveolus will be opened now if it is go goes down 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 to the e that is less than the closing pressure it will be collapsed now if you again increase the pressure at the point f it will be closed because what we have to do we have to increase it more than the opening pressure then it gets closed now you can see three points point b d and f at point b d alveolus is closed and point at point f d alveolus is closed but at point d d alveolus is open although they have the same pressures but still at the point d the alveolus is open now why i am telling this all these things because it is important to know that if you apply the you know peep early it will prevent the alveolus to get collapsed once it is collapsed it is very difficult to open that alveolus you have to increase the pressures more than the opening pressure then that alveoli will be opened but if you apply this peep early before the collapse it will and that pressure has to be above the closing pressure it will prevent the patient's alveoli to get collapsed so prevention is better than the cure now to understand how important is the positive and expiratory pressure in preventing the atelic trauma as well as increasing the compliance as well as increasing the oxygenation let we discuss the figures now in first you can see you have there is no application of the peep one you know alveoli is closed and other alveolus is opened Okay. and that closed alveolus is not taking part in any in not taking part in the ventilation okay now what will happen if you are giving positive pressure ventilation the entire tidal volume will go into that open alveolus and hence it will there will be increase over distension and there will be increased plateau pressures that is the pressure maximum pressure within the alveolus will also rise now second picture where we have applied the peep when you have applied the peep to the uh, you know alveolus it will open or the closed it will prevent the alveolus to get closed now what will happen the tidal volume will be distributed between both of these alveolus one that was closed that was about to get closed or that was you know that was you know with this application of this uh, this peep remained open and it will now participate in the ventilation and the tidal volume will be distributed between both of the alveolus and 
what will happen with this? It will increase the compliance of the lung and oxygenation will be better because that non-aerated or the collapsed lung will also participate in the oxygenation, it, uh, ventilation also. And more important, you can see the pressures, blood pressures is equal to 25 just to demonstrate that the plateau pressure will be on so will also be on the lower side now the detrimental effect can also happen with the application of peep you might have seen that when you increase the peep on the ventilator instead of getting a good oxygenation instead of getting a you know with increase in the what we have the concept that increasing the peep will increase the oxygenation you can see if you increase the peep there is you know paradoxical effect the paradox is that there is decrease in the oxygenation there is decrease in the oxygen saturation and there is decrease in the compliance now why it is happening at that time why it is happening just try to focus on these figures now you are applying the peep now that collapsed airway alveolus is there it is not opening or it is not preventing this peep is not preventing that alveolus to get collapsed the whole of the tidal volume will be will enter into that alveolus that was already opened okay now this peep increase has not helped you now what will happen this over this there will be over distension more and more tidal volume will go into that alveolus which was already open and with this over distension it will lead to the compression of the capillaries that are you know running through that so it will compress that capillaries and it will lead to the shunting of blood from aerated to the non-aerated and hence leading to the hypoxia so you have to make sure that once you are increasing the peep you just make sure whether it is increasing the compliance whether there is increase there is decrease in the plateau pressure if you are increasing the peep there is you know paradox effect like there is decrease in the oxygenation there is increase in the plateau pressure it is better to go very slow otherwise it will lead to the more complication rather than improving the lung functioning Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. In my upcoming video, I will be discussing what is permissive hypercapnia, what is breath stacking and what is auto peep. You can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Facebook by the name Dr. Munir Jan. Thank you very much.